our next speaker is Julian Simon. And Julian is a chief evangelist. I love that title, Julian. And I love your shirt. I already told you that. It's really cool. Um, he's chief evangelist of machine learning, data science, and AI at a privately owned company called Hugging Face. He's former global technical ML AI evangelist at Amazon Web. And his term is global traveler. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I flew last night, so uh, I'm hoping that my brain will slowly come back online. I'm probably at 50% right now, but I know, I know it's rising. Um, so I work for a company called Hugging Face, and our big thing, as you probably know, is transformers. And I'm going to give you a, a quick intro to that technology today. So I'm sure everybody here has read this paper uh, from already 11 years ago, software is eating the world. Everything is becoming an API, uh, a SaaS platform, or cloud. Um, and I think you know, a few years later, we realized how true this prediction was. And you know, in 2017, 2015, 2017, Deep learning really exploded onto the stage for, I would say, enterprise customers. Of course, it's, it had been present in, in research environments for a little longer. And, and companies realized that for a lot of very hard problems that they could never solve with traditional uh, uh, statistical machine learning algos, deep learning was just amazingly efficient, right? Computer vision, uh, natural language processing, audio, speech, reinforcement learning, uh, the list goes on. And soon enough, we were all swimming in new architectures like CNNs, not the one from Atlanta, uh, RNNs, and LSTM, and uh, so many variants. So looking at how deep learning actually started, uh, you know, we all heard the story, <laughs> I read the books, uh, of course, neural networks were resurrected back from the dead once again. Very old technology made, um, um, you know, sexy and efficient by the availability of cheap compute, pretty much. And so again, those architectures, CNNs, LSTMs, became very popular. Of course, to feed those models, uh, we needed tons of data. Um, and that wasn't so sexy and fun. Labeling, cleaning, uh, preparing very large data sets. Um, that was, and that still is, um, a, a massive effort. GPUs made it possible to apply those neural network algos to those huge data sets in a reasonably cost-effective way, especially on the cloud. And so everybody started happily crunching and crunching uh, deep learning models with GPUs. And they did that using what I would call expert tools. If you remember the early versions of TensorFlow, Theano, Torch, you know, as amazing as they were, uh, no one, I think, would really call them user-friendly and developer-friendly. And so you would need a lot of expertise in computer science and machine learning and frameworks uh, to get to a successful project. And that's a problem because we want everybody to join the party. We need everybody to join the party, not just the top 10 machine learning companies in the world. And so for a lot of people, you know, projects look like this cycle from hell, um, spending a ton of time on data prep, um, then experimenting and training, and trying to deploy, and doing it all over again. And, you know, and the, the one thing I dislike the most about this is we're trying when we draw things like this, we're trying to make them look agile, but it's really a waterfall project. It's just waterfall in agile disguise, and I think that's quite evil. So, you know, it was predictable. A lot of projects failed, a lot of projects still fail. Um, yes, you get to maybe POC stage, and you know, that's fine, people are happy, but then, very, very few projects actually end up at scale in production. And generally, adoption is still pretty bad. Everybody's trying to do it, but how many companies are really very successful and sees very strong business impact with deep learning? 
not so many, right? So the shark is just being swallowed by that maelstrom here. And there are tons of reasons for that. Uh, the, my favorite, I should say, is unclear goals. Uh, raise your hand here if somebody told you, hey, we should try deep learning to see what the technology can do. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Everybody else is concerned maybe their boss is in the room, so I, I get it. Uh, job security matters. Uh, but seriously, so many projects just go on without a clear business objective, right? And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want business impact. You know, all the customers I work with, they go into the, they go either into the we want to make money category or they go into the we want to save money category, right? And that's business enough to me. So if you don't have that, I don't think you have a project. Uh, skills, tools, like I said, you know, over time they've become more and more complex and you do need quite a collection of skills and tools to get the job done. Uh, and that's difficult. Reinventing the wheel is something engineers love to do, right? Uh, well, you know, this tool is being used by 100,000 companies, but we can't really use it because we're different. Sure. Um, that's a huge red flag to me. You know, things could be a little bit different, but, you know, question that. Make sure you don't reinvent everything from tools to platforms to models to everything. And as already mentioned, you know, waterfall projects, don't kid yourself, it's what you're doing. Uh, very, very few companies have mastered the agile machine learning workflow. They spend six months labeling data and then six months experimenting and then six months trying to deploy. And by that end, they don't even remember what the problem, uh, what problem they were originally trying to solve. So you need to go quicker than that. And you know, I'll, I'll take it to my grave, an okay production model beats a great sandbox model every time, right? The, the truth is in production, you, you will not know anything about your model until you've thrown real, messy, ugly, incomplete, buggy data at it, okay? And that can only happen in prod. So this is all very depressing, I'm sorry, um, but, you know, the, no fate. And yes, we can make deep learning as agile, and we can make it iterate as fast as we've learned to do for software engineering. And this is really what Hugging Face is trying to do. So, deep learning 2.0, um, hopefully it's not gonna be deep learning 1.1, we'll, we'll see. Um, but you know, we love to give names to those things. So, this is really what we're trying to build and, and, and push and you know, grow with the help of the community. So obviously transformers, are becoming the new de facto solution for deep learning. And we'll talk about transformers a little more, of course. And they tend to replace uh, reasonably quickly all the previous deep learning architectures. Transfer learning is a key advance in the sense that we don't really need to build and label and clean and manage those huge data sets. We can use off-the-shelf models that have been pre-trained by their authors uh, on huge quantities of data. Think, you know, all of Wikipedia plus, you know, anything else they could throw at it. You know, billions and billions and billions of, uh, of tokens and words and images, etc. So that's very good because we can test those models out of the box. Um, maybe they're just good enough that we can use them as is. For example, you know, translation models or sentiment analysis models, you know, generally do a good job out of the box and you probably don't need to train at all. So that's fine. Save time and money. Um, having said that, for business specific problem, let's say you work in chemical engineering or, you know, life sciences or genomics, of course, your documents are going to have very, very complex vocabulary that is marginally present in open data sets like Wikipedia. So to extract every bit of accuracy, you want to train a little longer, right? And we call that fine tuning, but it doesn't need a ton of data and it doesn't need a ton of time and money. So it's, it's a reasonably fast process. Um, all the more that you can use new chips to do this. Uh, you know, GPUs are still around and they're still very interesting, but a number of companies are building specific machine learning hardware designed from the ground up uh, to accelerate training and inference. And generally, they tend to deliver a better cost performance ratio than GPUs. 
And last but not least, uh, we're desperately trying to build the simplest tools possible to do all of that stuff. Uh, literally enabling you know, normal developers, and I mean that in the most you know, respectful and benevolent way, um, uh, folks who do not have a formal training in machine learning and deep learning and all that good stuff, uh, folks who just want to get the job done, folks who want to ha add predictive capabilities with state-of-the-art models, not models from 10 years ago, uh, to their applications. And so those developer tools are extremely important. And again, this is what we're trying to build. So transformers have um, been around since 2017, 2018. Everybody here has heard of Google BERT, uh, the, the grandfather of them all. Um, and so, of course, this started with NLP and expanded into computer vision and audio and speech and other domains right now. Um, and industry reports like the State of AI report or the Kaggle uh, Data Science Survey you know, picked it up. Uh, so it's not just you know, buzzwords and, and fancy blog posts. Uh, there's, there's a ton of adoption out there and um, so much that developers report that they're using RNNs, CNNs less and less uh, and transformers more and more. So there's really a shift um, in, that, uh, in that respect and that's interesting. You can see detailed numbers in there, of course. So, of course, my prediction or my opinion, call it what you want, what I see out there is that pretty quickly transformers are eating deep learning. Um, and so we see this whole new generation of models, you know, from BERT to GPT-2 to GPT-3 to our very own uh, Bloom model and, and the big science uh, model and the big science project which is an open alternative to GPT-3, um, are just um, you know, increasingly efficient for natural language processing. And the same is happening on, uh, on computer vision, and the same is happening on audio and speech. So we see those new models coming out literally every week, um, improving on uh, state-of-the-art benchmarks and being just amazingly efficient uh, with unstructured data. And I'm sure that slide needs to be updated already. I'm sure there are a few out since I built it. Um, those models are in production today. You know, they've uh, broken out of the lab. Um, you certainly know that, you know, Google has been using transformers for Google search for a while now. Our good friend Elon is uh, removing uh, legacy code and replacing it with transformers for autonomous driving. Uh, pretty much all the voice uh, stuff out there, you know, Alexa, Siri, uh, you know, um, Echo devices, everybody else uh, are powered by um, transformer models. But it's also, you know, it's not just the big hyperscale players, it's also, uh, you know, web companies like Pinterest using transformers for uh, recommendation. And JP Morgan and generally lots of uh, financial services companies using transformers uh, for NLP uh, workloads. So tons of customers are using that stuff. Yeah, it's real. And so when it comes to Hugging Face, um, we're uh, you know we're uh, an open source company. We also have some commercial products, but our I would say the main flagship project at Hugging Face is an open source project called the Transformers Library, which is a, a Python library that makes it super easy to work with all those new state-of-the-art models, you know, download them in, a li in one line of code, predict with them with one line of code, etc. Super developer-friendly. And when we compare the, uh, the adoption of that Transformers project with other very uh, amazing projects, on GitHub, you know, looking at GitHub stars, uh, we're literally growing faster in popularity than almost everybody else. I'm sure there's a project out there growing faster, but you know, it's amazing to me that you know, we're growing faster than PyTorch or Keras, which are amazing projects. Um, it's even crazier that we grow faster than Kubernetes. Uh, you know, we don't have the same marketing budget as Google. Um, so that adoption from the open source community is, is super strong. It's, you know, it keeps, keeps going. And everybody loves numbers. So uh, we have over 100,000 users 
on the hub every day. Uh, the hub is where we host our models and data sets, hoggingface.co. Feel free to sign up. Uh, and we have over one million model downloads every day. Okay, so these are big numbers just for machine learning. So transformers are here, they're popular, everybody's using them, great. Um, now, the second planet uh, is transfer learning. So um, it's, it's quite simple, really. You, know, you first try to understand what kind of problem you're trying to solve. Okay? Are you working with text? Are you working with images? Are you working with speech? And then what's the exact thing you're trying to do here? Are you trying to do sentiment analysis or image segmentation or text-to-speech or speech-to-text? You know, that's, okay. that generally, that's an easy question to answer. And then you can go to the Hugging Face Hub and you can browse all the models we have there. Um, and within minutes, you, know, you can identify a short list of models that have been pre-trained on a similar problem. And you can try them right out of, right out of the box. Okay, you can try them on the website or you can use our open source libraries to download them and predict with them. So initially, you know, you can start experimenting even if you have no data whatsoever. You do not need to build a data set. Okay, you can work with whatever test data you have. And, and again, shortlist some models that are, you know, apparently a good fit for your project. And again, like, as I've said, you know, sometimes it's good enough. You know, you don't need to go further than that. Uh, translation models typically will work pretty nicely and, and you can just use them like that. Obviously, sometimes you do need to train a little more. So um, you need to prepare you know, much smaller data set that you would need if you were training completely from scratch. Um, and so that's a, a, you know, a minor effort. And you don't need to fine tune for weeks and weeks and weeks, okay? So you're not gonna spend a ton of money and, and time on, on that fine tuning job. And you can get more accuracy for your domain-specific data. Okay? And with our open source libraries, that means very little code. Um, so far, I've only spoken about unstructured data. And I very much enjoyed the, the previous talk, and I agree with, I guess, 100% <laughs> of what was said there. Um, now, there is working progress on... Um, using transformer models for tabular data. Uh, Amazon actually published a last, in the last few months a model called Tab Transformer. And, and I would totally agree that it's very, you know, it's very early days, very rough. Uh, I would never recommend that anybody use the, that stuff in production versus XGBoost or CatBoost. Um, but I think it's, it's worth keeping an eye on, um, particularly since they mention a technique where we could pre-train uh, transformers on unlabeled tabular data, right? And everybody in the room here has a mountain of unlabeled data. So you could do initial training on that and then do fine-tuning on just a little bit of labeled data. Uh, so I'll... You know, for the sake of time, I'll leave you to, uh, I'll leave you to that. Uh, go and check out the paper. Again, I'm not saying it's production ready, far from it. But I think it's an interesting, uh, uh, it's an interesting avenue to explore. So here's the Hugging Face Hub uh, that I mentioned a few times. Uh, we tend to call it the GitHub of machine learning because I guess people understand what I mean when I say that. And um, so this is a slide that's, uh, never up to date, because the number of models changes every minute, I guess. Uh, right now, we have about 66,000 models for natural language processing and computer vision and audio and um, multimodal and a few tabular models and some reinforcement learning models, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, like I said, if you want to do a particular... Uh, if you're looking for a particular uh, type of model, you just go and explore that, and very quickly, you can find five to ten models. The most popular ones are a good place to start, usually, and start experimenting in, in minutes, right? Even if you don't have a data set. So here's an example of using a hugging face model. So here I'm doing zero-shot classification on a bit of text. And as you probably know, zero-shot classification lets you specify the labels that you want to score the text against. Okay? And this could be an arbitrary list of words. Uh, and you're not bound by 
um, the labels that were present in the training set. So it's an interesting technique. So the, I just import the transformers library and its pipeline object, create a pipeline for zero-shot classification using a Facebook model, and that's it. Invoke it, and I get my result. And so this model tells me this bit of text is you know, very much about finance, a little bit about science, and then the rest is less relevant. That's it, okay? And uh, this is a reasonably weird text, right? It's not, oh, uh, I love my new pair of shoes or something, okay? And it did a reasonably good job at it. So that really shows you know, the power of using those models, those pre-trained models out of the box. Um, and then you can go and deploy that to whatever POC you want to build. Um, and if you need more accuracy, then you can go and train, but only if you really need it. Uh, machine learning hardware you know, is, is something I'm really interested in. So as mentioned before, it's a new generation of, of chips that accelerate training. And of course, we want to accelerate training because the faster we train, the more we can, the more models we can train within a you know, business day. Um, and we can just iterate quicker. And we know how important it is to iterate on those models to get to um, you know, the right accuracy, the right combination of hyperparameters, et cetera, et cetera. So iteration is king and uh, speeding it up is important. Accelerating prediction is equally important. Uh, we want low latency, especially for applications like conversational apps or search. And we generally want the best cost performance ratio. So we work with a number of companies like Graphcore, Habana Labs, which is part of Intel. Uh, we work with Intel as well. We do a lot of work on CPU inference, Qualcomm, AWS, et cetera. Uh, and we have a, a dedicated library for, for that acceleration called Optimum. Uh, you can go and check it out. And finally, putting everything together, you know, when I say developer tools, this is what I mean. This is the family picture. So on the right, we start from data sets and models on the hub. Uh, so we have those 66,000 models and we have 8,000 data sets that you can start from. Um, and they're already in the right format and you know, it's, there's no messing around with that data. You just load it and predict it or train on it. Um, and then you can feed that data and that model to one of our training options. Um, the, the, one, the main one, I guess, is the Transformers library, which has a very high level API called the Trainer API that lets you train with very simple code. You don't need to get into PyTorch craziness or TensorFlow madness. You can keep it high level and train with reasonably simple Python code. Um, we have a, a library called Accelerate that takes it down one level uh, if you want full control of the training loop and if you want to do uh, you know, multi-GPU, multi-TPU training in a reasonably straightforward way. And as mentioned, we have Optimum for uh, hardware acceleration. And we also have a no-code training option called AutoTrain, uh, which uh, starts with NLP, uh, added tabular data uh, using non-transformer models. And uh, literally yesterday, we introduced computer vision. So now you can do, uh, do no-code uh, computer vision transformers. I still have to try it. <laughs> uh, once you have a model that you like, uh, you, of course you want to show it to your business stakeholders, right? If you run your demo in the notebook, it's not very sexy. and People don't, don't get what you're doing. They don't understand what Jupyter is and, and so on. And of course you don't want to build a bespoke web app you know, from scratch to showcase the model. No one wants to do that. So that's why we build Spaces, which is a very simple way to to demo and showcase your models using either the Gradio framework, which is part of Hugging Face, or the Streamlit framework, okay? And if you've been playing with all those text-to-image models like Dali Mini and Stable Diffusion, right? Burning GPU time, uh, well, you've certainly done that on the Hugging Face space recently. And finally, when it comes to deploying models, you can use, again, you can use Optimum to accelerate inference um, and deploy anywhere you like, on your own machine, on your, in a container, et cetera. Or you can use the inference API, which is our managed, um, our managed solution. 
where you just load models. And on the cloud side, we have partnerships with AWS on, uh, on SageMaker. We're a first party framework there, so just bring your code. Uh, we have built in containers for Hugging Face. And you can also deploy models on Azure through the Hugging Face endpoints, which is available on the Azure marketplace. So, summing things up, um, well, I guess, you know, if you've never looked at transformers, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, but I think that beyond that, I think the key message is I'm trying to make machine learning simpler and boring, you know. Um, so that everyone can use it with no drama and no fuss and get the job done and move on to the next project. So if we could try n to avoid making ML complicated just for the sake of complicating it, you know, I know it looks good on the resume and as an engineer, you know, I know it's interesting to work on very hard problems, but I much prefer working on simple problems and moving on to the next project. So we really need to focus on the right things. Um, Keep, always keep an eye on the business goals and the KPIs. If we don't have that, we don't have a project. Um, anytime we can, save time with pre-trained models, transfer learning, you know, don't go and build your PyTorch model from scratch. Uh, I know it was a thing years ago, but these days, honestly, most of the companies I talk to, you know, they, they've completely stopped doing that. They, they start from existing architectures and fine tune on their own data. Please avoid reinventing the wheel for your own sake, okay? I know it looks good to build your own machine learning platform, and some companies may need to do that. Um, but for everyone else, everything you need is probably out there, so just pick the ones you like, pick the ones that work best for you, and use that, okay? And focus on the business problem, not on the plumbing. And last but not least, if you're in a larger team, um, work hard on you know, collaboration, exchanging models and data sets. Who needs 19 different versions of BERT that are actually the same because you didn't know your friends in the other team were training it? So, you know, that's, that still happens a lot. And tools like, you know, the Hugging Face Hub let you put all your models and your data sets in the same place. So, you know, now it's easier to discover them and share them e internally or externally. All right, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you. Uh, so thank you very much. If you have a few, if you have a few minutes for questions, then uh, let's do questions. And uh, I'm doing a workshop tomorrow where we're gonna be running code. Not sure if we have some seats left, but if you're interested, you know, go and check that out. Um, and you, know, you can catch me later today or tomorrow and, and chat and ask questions. Okay, thank you very much.